Yo, what's going on, man? Y'all already know who this is. Listen, I want to deal with one of the most controversial topics and issues that's going on in the Christianity world today. You know, especially this is one of the big attack points for Bible critics. So it's about if the Bible condones slavery. Very big thing. And the answer is yes. The Bible does condone slavery. Now, you know it's not that simple. When we're talking about slavery, we're talking about purpose thereof. So we're gonna talk, you know, so what is a slave? What was the purpose of slavery? That's what I wanna break down with y'all. So the first thing that I wanna say is American slavery, which is what we as African-Americans endured over 400 years ago, is not the same slavery that the Bible speaks about. As a matter of fact, I want—I just want to read something to you guys as an opener, so just to open your understanding to this. So I want to read this. This is coming from the book of Exodus. This is uh, Exodus 21:16. It says, "Whoever steals a man and sells him, and anyone found in his possession, shall be put to death." So, the thing about American slavery, I think we all can agree that we were taken against our will, stolen, we were sold against our will, uh, we were separated from our families, abused and murdered. So automatically from Exodus 21, 16, it's already letting you know that the Bible did not condone the type of slavery that we were in. So, matter of fact, the purpose and the point of slavery, believe it or not, was to actually help the poor and help people in debt. So. This is what slavery really was. Back then, we didn't have government loans. We didn't have, you know, uh, uh, credit agencies and stuff like that. So when you had someone that was in debt or someone that was poor, they sold themselves into slavery. Slavery was voluntary. They would, if a person was poor, they would find someone that was wealthy, financially stable, who could take care of them, and they would sell themselves to that person and have that person take care of them and they would work for them, not as a slave, but as a hired worker. Or if someone was in debt, they sold themselves into slavery and worked for that person in order to pay off a debt. As a matter of fact, I wanna read a scripture that backs that up as well. So, uh, this is coming from Leviticus 25, 39, 40. It says, if your brother becomes poor beside you and sells himself to you, you shall not treat him as a slave, he shall be with you as a hired worker, and he shall serve with you into the year of Jubilee. So what that means is, and this is also backed up by another scripture, which is Exodus 21, 2. Now, this is actually talking about Hebrew slavery. This isn't talking about American slavery. And in Exodus 21, 2, it says, if you buy a Hebrew slave, then that slave will serve for you for six years, and after six years, he will be free and have nothing to pay. So that's letting you know that you're setting the slave free after six years, he has nothing to pay. So that's letting you know that he's already cleared a debt. So the thing about it is, not only did you have to set the slave free after six years, but you also had to give him things to support himself. Let me justify that with scripture. So Deuteronomy 15, 13, it says, and when you let him go free from you, you shall not let him go empty handed. Already, this is a big contradiction to American slavery. Now, some people, they served as slaves for lives because they had an option to. Remember, slaves was voluntary. The Bible says in Exodus 21, five and six, that if a slave plainly says, I love my master, I will not go free. The master is to bring him to God and he's to serve as a slave all the days of his life. So. God is already letting you know that he didn't tolerate uh, taking someone against their will. The tragic thing about American slavery is the fact that, unfortunately, you know, white people back then took advantage of us as people and the fact that we weren't very educated and they used the scriptures and perverted them and used them as a means of controlling African Americans and making them feel like the slavery that they were putting African Americans through was justified by scripture when it really wasn't. God in no way, shape, or form justifies any mistreatment of anybody from the Old Testament and the New Testament. So at the end of the day, it's very similar to what even modern pastors do today in the church where they use 
different sectors of the Bible to control congregation. When a pastor wants money out of the church, what does he do? He preaches finances. You know, or when he wants to persuade a church to do a certain thing, he preaches a message on that. They use whatever scriptures they want to do to put church in whatever bondage they want to and under whatever control or whatever laws they want to. Very similar to what white people did to blacks when it came to slavery. During slavery, using a Bible as a means to control slaves. But at the end of the day, no matter what, God is all loving. Um, God makes no mistakes. God is perfect in every way. So at the end of the day, I hope this opens a lot of eyes. I hope this sheds some light on a lot of people who maybe one foot in and one foot out, maybe wasn't sure about if they should be all in with Christ. No matter what, man, Jesus Christ first. Um, the Bible makes it very clear that through grace alone, faith alone, in Jesus Christ, that is the only way that we're saved. Remember, nobody comes to the Father but by him. That's in John 14, 6, man. He already paid the price for us, man, no matter what, except Jesus Christ. I thank you guys for watching. I love each and every one of y'all, man. Peace out.